Hello and welcome to this episode of Standard Deviation, my column and video series. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan and today I'm going to be speaking to you about a gradual change that's taking place in rural India that's slowly changing how they spend their money. Rural India is witnessing quite a gradual change, but it's picked up pace recently, at least at the very top, as can be seen from consumer behavior, travel habits and access to basic amenities. A section of rural Indians is increasingly choosing to spend a larger share of their income on eating out and on conveyance, which includes both cars and flights. What's more, there's also an increasing availability of basic amenities like electricity and tap water. Many of these improvements in the quality of living have happened in the 10 years since 2011-12 with the Modi government naturally able to claim the bulk of the credit for this as it has been in power for most of the time since then. Some improvements like access to tap water and regional airports can directly be attributed to the Modi government. A large part of the insight into the lives of rural Indians comes from the data in the recently released and much awaited Household Consumption Expenditure Survey 2022-23. The standout point from the survey, as has now been noted by various commentators, is the falling share of expenditure that rural households spend on food and on staples like cereals and pulses in particular. Now, the seemingly obvious explanation here is that the Modi government has been giving large amounts of grain free of cost to 80 crore people and so, of course, they would have more money to spend on other things. But the data keeps this in mind. The survey also includes data on expenditure after imputing the value of the items that these households get for free. Interestingly, even after including the value of the free food grains, the survey shows rural households spend a lower share on cereals in 2022-23 than they did in 2011-12. Now, the periodicity of the data is uneven since it has not been released regularly. For example, the data we have is for 1990-91, then 2004-05, 2009-10, 2011-12, and then one big jump to 2022-23. The time differences between each of these periods differ widely which means a statistical comparison over time won't be robust. But the main upshot of the latest data is that rural households are now choosing to spend just about 7% of their total monthly expenditure on cereals, the first time this number has fallen below 10%. Pulses make up less than 2% of the monthly budget, again a first. As I said earlier, Overall expenditure on food has been falling and made up less than 50% of total expenditure by rural households for the first time since 1990. This is great news. The hallmark of the increasing development of our country is the falling share of staples in overall household expenditure. What this has also meant is that while the share of spending on overall food has fallen for rural households, it has risen in the beverages, processed food and cooked meals category. What does this mean? It means that at least the more affluent rural households are choosing to spend a larger share of their money on processed and packaged food, which is largely sold by FMCG companies, and on cooked meals, likely either at dhabas or small restaurants. The data makes this quite clear. Now. The Consumption Expenditure Survey provides an average for rural India. Statistically, an average rise in the share of expenditure on processed and cooked food would either mean that those who already could afford such food are increasingly choosing it, or that the band of households that can afford it is growing wider. We will likely get a clear answer when the government releases the second round of the survey next year, which will contain the granular data. But if this indeed marks a wider shift away from having no option but to eat just dal roti and sabzi made on a wood-fired chula, then it is no doubt a welcome one. 
This also gives the government some insight how it can further fine tune and better target the support it offers to help those at the very bottom. Now, this is of course not to say that everything is going well for rural Indians and that all is well. There is still severe income distress for the majority of them, as can be seen by the high demand for income support schemes like Narega. But any change from this situation is worth taking note of. Then there's the fact that the share of expenditure by rural households on conveyance has also shot up. Conveyance here means all modes of transport, but does not include fuel costs. Before some of you point out that this rising transport expenditure is because of high petrol and diesel prices. Conveyance includes expenditure on vehicles, trains, flights and other travel related costs. The fact that spending on conveyance is a rising share of a rural household's monthly expenditure is backed by the fact that the growth in passenger vehicle sales in rural India has been faster than the sales in urban India in each of the last six years since 2018-19. Of course, this is on a lower base, but a six-year streak is no fluke. Although still at a relatively nascent stage, rural and small-town Indians are increasingly switching away from two-wheelers to four-wheelers which is a departure from the typical image of a farmer riding a rickety two-wheeler. Also, enough and more has been written about how more Indians are now choosing to fly, but less has been said about the fact that the share of the bigger airports is falling. Data with the Airports Authority of India shows that the share of the six airports in the big metros, when looked at in domestic passenger numbers, has fallen to 58% in the April to January period of this financial year from about 65% during the same period in 2014-15. What's more, it has been reported that the top 10 airports in the country accounted for just 69% of the domestic footfalls in 2024, down from 75% in 2014. What this means is that more people are taking off from and landing at the smaller airports, many of which have come up under the government's Udan scheme. This is a sign that flights are no longer the sole domain of the urban rich. Sections of rural and semi-urban India are also taking to the air. In fact, the Prince Krishan Murari reported from the ground and discovered the transformation a new airport is bringing about in Darbhanga in Bihar. As we have seen in movies and in international magazines, the image of village women walking in the early morning light to far off wells, carrying pots on their heads, is one of the most enduring and popular images associated with rural India. The reality, however, should be different now. Government data shows that just a few days ago, the Jal Jeevan mission crossed the milestone of providing 75% of rural households with tap water connections. When it was launched in August 2019, just about 17% of rural households were covered. Now, even if you want to discount the official data and say the government is overstating its achievements, let's assume that the number is actually 50% and not 75%. Even that means that one in two rural households has access to a tap. Of course, one can question whether there is water flowing through these taps. But as Bengaluru has shown us over the past few days, a shortage of water is a problem that is not restricted to just rural India or the poor. Perhaps the most striking change in rural India was highlighted by economist Radhika Pandey in her weekly Macro Sutra column for the print and also in the video that we did together on the topic. She pointed out that the urban-rural gap has shrunk more for the lower consumption groups. That is, the difference between the rural poor and the urban poor in terms of how much money they are spending is declining. This, as Radhika noted, is a sign that government policies have been effective in targeting and uplifting the rural poor. Now, most of these data points have been reported before, but taken together, they point to a gradual change in rural India, 
a fact that has something for everybody. Policy makers need to make sure that this change isn't restricted to paper. They must also determine whether this change in consumer behavior is concentrated amongst a slim band of affluent rural households or if the band itself is becoming wider. FMCG companies too will want to look into whether this represents a new and growing market. But on that note, that's all from me. Thank you for watching.